Hi guys, I think this will be episode 8 in my potato powered car project, or whatever I called it, potato power revisited series. Now in the last episode, I worked out that I probably need at least 20 potatoes in parallel to deliver enough current to drive that little car. So I've been and bought a bag of potatoes and I bought these copper plant tags which are for putting labels on plants. There's ten in a pack and they come with copper wire as well. I reckon I can cut each of those in half and that will help me just to push a copper plate in each potato. I think I may even solder them all together using the copper wire so that I can just daisy chain them. Well, parallel is probably not daisy chaining, but daisy chain the copper. And then for the other electrode, I'll use my magnesium tape. And I'll see if I can just loop that in and out of every potato. Well, not making much progress here. I've actually taken my battery apart again entirely, stripped out all the copper plates, and now I'm going through and adding them in one at a time. I managed to get up to about 4 milliamps. One of the problems I seem to have is when I folded over the magnesium strip and pushed it in, it broke on the fold, it's very brittle. So I'm having to use paper clips to try and give us continuity, electrical continuity, by squeezing them back together again. And I'm working my way along slowly, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in parallel at the moment and we're only on 4 milliamps so I don't think we're going to manage it with the 20 that I've got here well I'm up to about 5.5 milliamps but uh, no, it doesn't look good I'm going to abandon the magnesium for a minute because I seem to be having lots of continuity problems with it Very briefly, we get about 6 milliamps from it, but we should be getting about, well, 18 milliamps, maybe 20 milliamps. So I'm going to abandon the magnesium, and I'm going to try zinc, which is not going to give us the same sort of output, but I shouldn't have the continuity problem. Well. I think that shows that we've got a problem with the magnesium strip. So I'm getting 5.5 milliamps now. Well, it's dropping a little bit as so I'm talking. I'm getting 5.5 milliamps using galvanised wire. OK, 
because that's given us good continuity. Yeah, that is dropping away now. That's the stuff I was using. Galvanised garden wire. And what we're doing is we're measuring the milliamps that are trying to drive the motor in that little car. We've already established that one needs nearer 20 milliamps. Well, 18 I think it was maybe even 16 <laughs> but certainly more than we're getting there that is steadily dropping off now but that's a better output than I was getting with the magnesium simply because it's a nice continuous length of wire I've just bent it into loops and pushed the loops into the potatoes So we're not really any further forwards. 5 milliamps from 20 potatoes. That means I need 80 potatoes. If we're going to do it with copper and zinc. Well, I'm still not making much progress. We've now got 33 potatoes in parallel. So if I connect the motor up and watch the meter, well, nearly 8.5 millivolts, but still nothing like enough to drive that motor. Summary time, another failure. 33 potatoes, I think I counted. Just using copper and galvanised wire, or zinc galvanised wire. Best I could get was about 8.5 millivolts. So still only halfway to what we need. Clearly, just adding potatoes in parallel is not increasing the power at the same rate. Probably something to do with the internal resistance of each potato. A little bit like connecting good batteries and bad batteries together. You get less voltage out of it than you should do because the good battery is feeding into the bad battery. So that may be what's going on here. Just a guess, but we're certainly still miles away from driving any of my little electric motors with potato power.